I need to address right away the delicacies of you as president of the World Bank managing not a scandal but an uproar with the managing director of the International Monetary Fund when she was at the World Bank. You've made some very important public comments on that. Summarize that right now of how you stand in the study of these allegations against uh, Dr. Georgieva. It, 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 I think there are bigger stories for us this Absolutely. morning. Uh, so Absolutely. the World Bank puts out a lot of reports. And uh, so in 2020, there were uh, the staff raised uh, questions about the integrity of data uh, dating back to 2018. And so there was an outside uh, firm brought in, a law firm, to look at it. The board of directors got into it, issued right. the report uh, last week. So it shows the irregularities and goes through that. Uh, the report speaks for itself. You speak so for the report. You think the report stands? Stands on its own, and, and uh, yes, and we've discontinued the report. Uh, but the World Bank is going to be very, very involved in the business climate of developing countries. That's critical for them in establishing jobs, in getting growth, mm -hmm. uh, in in attracting new investment. And that's the purpose of the report. Uh, the purpose of the World Bank uh, is to help countries and the people in the countries move ahead. The, so the, we're still going to be doing that. You're going to still be doing that, and you had this report come out as well, and we don't need to get into the nitty-gritty of who did this or what. Is further action needed by you on this uproar? Are you saying enough, let's move on? The report's discontinued, and we'll be forming and looking for new ways okay. to have an impact in those areas, which I think is right. the most important thing now. Time is too valuable right now. It's $7 a dose to get a vaccine. Why can't we vaccinate Africa? Yeah, this is on everyone's mind, and it's frustrating. The excess in the advanced economies, I'm, I'm chair of a task force that includes IMF, WTO, and, and uh, WHO. Uh, and so the, the, there are 2.4 billion excess doses in the advanced economies. Wow. So wow. the goal would be to have those early doses, the early deliveries, go to developing countries where that can use those particular doses. You know, it's a hard logistics problem uh, because you've got got to get the dose from the factory uh, to a country that wants that kind of dose. So some want uh, mRNA doses, some want AstraZeneca, some want J&J, &J, and so on down the, the list. And then they sit in a warehouse, uh, and they're not applied to people. And that, I think, has to be improved. Mm -hmm. We're urging, and the task force is urging, uh, the advanced economies to allow uh, a swapping of doses. So if they have a delivery scheduled into their warehouses uh, in October of this year or <clears throat> November of this year, right. allow that dose to go to a developing country person and take a later delivery schedule because you don't need it. You've got excess 2.4 billion doses. Yeah, David, it's an excellent point. We're having a conversation now about boosters here in the U.S. when there's many people throughout the world who have yet to receive their initial dose. Do you need the Biden administration to take more leadership on that? Hi, Kaylee. Uh, you, you know, I don't I, I think the world has to come together and find solutions to this problem. Um, and the, the boosters are countries are going to want to do that as needed in order to protect their population. That still leaves huge amounts of excess doses, even in near term deliveries. What we're working on right now is trying to get November and mm -hmm. December deliveries uh, scheduled uh, so that uh, so that the countries can prepare to act, deliver that kind. You need a specific kind of cold storage or of uh, of of of, of um, um, yeah. trained personnel on each kind of uh, vaccine, and that needs we need much higher numbers of vaccinations in developing countries and especially the poorest right. countries. Well, David, of course, the United States has made pledges on the vaccine front. Also, this week at the United Nations, the president doubled his commitment in terms of financial aid for climate change for the developing world. Just how bad is the climate problem? in certain areas of the world. And if, from an economic standpoint, how dire is the situation? The, from an adaptation standpoint, so preparing for changes in climate, uh, the countries are way behind, and that costs lives. Uh, the World Bank, the World Bank's the biggest uh, f financer of climate change in the uh, of, among the international financial institutions. In fact, more than half of all of the finance is World Bank, and over half of that uh, is for adaptation to to address uh, uh, countries that are in low-lying areas, uh, people where where population 
populations are at risk. The other part of the equation is to identify and prioritize the highest uh, emitters of greenhouse gases and mm -hmm. recognize that those have to be brought down. Uh, that, that's a small group of countries with big em emissions and, more importantly, uh, the projection of emissions into the future. You know, there are 9,000 coal-fired power plants today, uh, and there are more in the planning stages. The permits so, are still being right. issued. So these are big challenges. They cost a lot of money, and there has to be a plan for actually what do you do with the workers, how do you change the uh, system so that there's less greenhouse gas emissions. Then what can you impute on China? If China's struggling with this, to say the least, and the, the marginal development of coal, what is the World Bank strategy to assist China to a better climate outcome? We have some programs in China, but you know its income's gone up, and we're we're reducing that. Most really? of our pro yeah, most of our programs uh, mm -hmm. are are in the area of uh, of uh, global public goods and specifically marine plastic abatement mm -hmm. so that because a lot of plastic goes into the oceans from the rivers in in China and so we're working on that he wow. heavily with regard to coal we do have so, what, one project area in China uh, but wherever it is in the world it's hard to decommission an actual operating coal mm -hmm. plant y the US sees right. that and that's a challenge so the the world's looking to China to uh, do that to, mm -hmm. to change and I saw yesterday China released the uh, the uh, idea that they're not going to finance coal-fired plants yes. outside China. So that's yeah. a step. Around the world, we need all of those steps. 